Okay, hello there, I'm Dennis. I'm going to install Zubuntu. Now, I apologize if I get anything wrong about Zubuntu. I have not done research on it like I normally would. So I'm going to be basically live. So I've set Zubuntu up, their da latest download. I give it four gigabytes of RAM, two cores of my processor. I've been able to EFI, and I've given it 52 point, uh, 52.5 gigabytes uh, virtual hard drive. So let's get started here. The virtual machine execution ran into a fatal problem as described below. We suggest that you take the appropriate action to prevent the problem from reoccurring. Details the image. Distro desktop is inaccessible. Okay. Let me just power that off. Open back virtual box. Go into settings. And go to storage. We'll remove that. Said desktop. You know why it said desktop wouldn't has never been on my desktop. At Linux distros Zubuntu. There it is. So if I read that right, it couldn't find that. Let's find out if that was the case. Apparently. I must have moved it. Maybe even renamed it. So your first options it's going to uh, start off with by default. It's going to say, try Zubuntu without installing. Try Zubuntu without installing safe graphics. Install Zubuntu. Install Zubuntu safe graphics. OEM install for manufacturers. I just did a video on that on Linux Mint. And I really suggest that if you have this option to use it, if you're setting up a Linux operating system for another person, and that way you don't have to come up with their name and their password. All right, so next option will be boot from the next volume or UEFI firmware settings. If we go into it without installing it, I should be able to install it from within. So let's do that and see what the desktop looks like. We'll go ahead and get in full screen mode here. Yeah, it's been a heck of a week here. And I truly appreciate the fact that I have this to do because it's it's honestly going to take my mind off it's already working it's taking my mind off of everything else and hopefully i can get through this and i think i'll feel better check was finished with no errors found I'm not sure there's no prompt to hit anything or no enter or all right it was just information on there and i can see it's not going to be in Full screen. It looks like the whisker menu. Settings, display. Go ahead and make this 1680 by 1050 and apply and keep it. All right. So, at one immediate difference I see between this XFCE and uh, XFCE installed on Arch or any other, most any other distro, we don't have a dock at the bottom here. All right. Let's see. Well, first of all, there's the install. And do we have G parted just so we can see the disk? Make sure it's recognized. There it is. It's 52.5. I'm going to go ahead and just create a partition table of not MS DOS but GPT. Say apply. All right. Now I'm going to close out of this. And let's run the installer. So now the installer should recognize that hard drive and have the GPT theming going on. So it correctly selected English. Here you can click on release notes, but I saw on their website just a few minutes ago, you also had this option there. So I'll, I will click on that, but let's click on that when we get the installer working here. So I'm gonna click continue for English. English US for my keyboard. You can always do a test. It's always a good idea to put a good couple symbols in there. Okay, that looks right. So, okay. Download updates and install while installing Ubuntu. Install third party software for graphics and Wi Fi hardware 
and additional media formats. Now, if I was installing this on real hardware, both of these would be ticked, and I think it might make my life a little easier in the long run. However, I am in a virtual box, and I'm not sure I even want to do the updates, but I'm going to go ahead and say let's do the updates. That way our system is fresh. Click Continue. I think right now it's syncing itself with, uh-oh. It didn't like my setting there, did it? Go back to that, see if it'll let me go back. Not sure what caused that. Had to be a virtual box thing. Okay, so now we're into the installation type. That it wants to, by default, it wants to erase the disk and install Zubuntu. And here you'll have the option to use LVM or encryption. Experimental erase disk and use the ZFS file system. Or something else. So, normally, normally I do something else and I format it myself. On the Linux Mint, I watched, uh, I allowed that, that, uh, I allowed Mint to do its own partitioning, and I didn't really like it. So I'm not going to do that no more here, especially this is Ubuntu, and it's based on, or Mint is based on Ubuntu. So I'm going to do something else. I'm going to left-click on my space there, and I'm going to say plus. And let's see, the first one is my num on. Yes, it is. All right, so primary, X or T, this here is going to be EFI system partition. Say OK. All right, so it went ahead and set up a megabyte little free space. Now I'll left click on the free space, hit the plus button. Now this is going to be swap. So I'm going to say 4096, give it 4 gigs of swap. On the type here, we're going to select swap area, and that all looks good. Beginning of the space, say OK. All right, now I'm going to click the remainder of that space and say Add. And here, let's just divide that almost in half. And the mount point will be root or slash XTX, EXT extended forward journaling file system. Okay. Free space there. Now I've got 26 gigs left. I'm going to say okay. And then we're going to mount that to home, which is right there, and say okay. And I did see, I wonder, oh, all right. Well, I did see when I was checking the flags out there for the last one there, there was a, a flag for uh, the EFI boot partition. And if I saw that, I would have selected that as well. So here's what we got. Right at the very beginning, there's our one megabyte of space that's free for nothing. We got 510 megabytes for our EFI system. We got a swap partition, and we got root and home. I think I said that wrong. That little green spot is the EFI partition. The orange spot is the swap partition. The blue spot is our root or uh, admin per, uh, partition. And the green is our home or data drive. So install now. Did select the virtual drive right here. All right, it should be. There we go. Chicago is in the central time zone. You select your time zone. Now it's asking me for my name. Now I'm going to give it a name. I'm going to create a password. And I'm going to verify it. It's warning me that it is a short password. I advise you to give yourself a better password. And I'm not going to log in automatically so we can see that that works. Click Next. And we're off to the races. It's almost finished copying files. Let me get out of full screen here and bring up the web page. This is zubuntu.org. This is their home page. And just right away, right off the bat, I like the appearance. Blue happens to be one of, my, one of if not my favorite color anyway. 
and the different shadings of blue just attracts my eye. It makes it look appealing to me. So, on their webpage right here, we, we could take a tour. Let's take a little tour here and see what it shows us about Zubuntu. Or Shubuntu, it could be. A good balance. We believe that you should be able to utilize the maximum system performance to things you care about. Zubuntu is built around lightweight software with a lot of consideration for usability. It's ready to use. Zubuntu has enough applications pre-installed for you to deal with daily tasks without having to install additional features. So we're going to see. It says pre-installed with a web browser, a client with mail client, word processor, spreadsheet, probably all LibreOffice, and applications for our music, videos, and photos, and some useful tools. So we might get some pretty neat stuff here. Uh, here you can learn more about the XFCE desktop. Uh, if you watch some of my videos, I explain what the XFCE XForm uh, factor, that's what that stands for. It used to, not anymore. And it used to be capital X, capital F, capital C, capital E, not anymore. Interesting. Okay, to make the desktop my own, that's one of the reasons why I love or like or prefer XFCEs. I feel like I've got more control over it than some of the other systems and enough control. KDE, for instance, gives me too much control for me. Uh, make the desktop my own. Apart from the application selection, you can control many more aspects of the operating system through the including set settings manager. Celebrate the community. Shubuntu is free of charge, built in by the community, built by the community, for the community. Being free extends beyond the operating system itself. You can get free support, virtually free support virtually every hour of the day. One thing I did notice a while ago when I was looking around, right here on their webpage, they give you permission to make a spinoff of whatever they're using. They do give you a couple of guys. So we might get to that here in a second. You can download the latest Ubuntu release from Get Ubuntu, Zubuntu. If you prefer stability over new features, download the LTS version. Okay, is there a next? There is a screenshot next. And that's pretty much what we just saw. No dock at the bottom, whisker menu at the top. Pan the panel on the top doesn't bother me at all. I, I prefer it on the bottom. For me, because that's just where it's always been. I knew even in Windows you could move it just by unticking the lock, the taskbars <laughs> option. All right, so let's see. Where was I at when I saw that? Development area for derivatives. I thought that was pretty interesting right here on their webpage. It's telling you that's giving you permission to use Ubuntu for whatever to build your own system. The only thing that it says, it gives you these guidelines. First one in bigger letters, it said, do not use Ubuntu or the Ubuntu logo. Use your own name. Use your own logos. Leave theirs alone. And as you see, there's not really a lot of, a lot of restrictions in here. You know, the stuff that you would typically expect if somebody was respectful of your operating system to not name it theirs or yours. <laughs> use their own name. So we got a lot of stuff here that we could look at. I really like the way it's laid out. It's, pretty, it's rather simple. Everything's self-explanatory. Uh, even got their own uh, product line, which I think is really nice. If I wasn't in the position I was in right at this point, I, I might even buy something. Uh, I have been known. You see my blanket, maybe. <laughs> All right, so if we go to DistroWatch and we look at Zubuntu, it's way down here for some reason. Uh, number 33. Some of these, <laughs> some of these I question, but it's not me that, taking the tally, keeping the toll. Debian based to Ubuntu. Origin, Isle of Man. I meant to look that up. I wonder if I just click on that. No, not to get what I want to. But Isle of Man. Isle of Man. Uh-huh. Isle of Man. The Island of Man. 
is a self-governing British Crown dependency in the Irish Sea between England and Ireland. It's known for its rugged coastline, medieval castles, and rural landscaping. Wow. Rising through the mountainous center in the capital, Douglas, the Manx Museum traces the island's Celtic and Viking heritage. The Isle of Man, TT, is a major annual cross-country motorcycle race around the island. Wow. Well, sounds like a cool place. <laughs> Let's see, don't that make it full screen? Let's see what. It is. Very nice. Very nice. So, that's a small island to be doing such a big project. <laughs> but they're doing well. They got a lot of, lot of support. Ubuntu, as you know, is probably the largest single Linux like or Unix like operating system out there. I'm not sure it's going to stay that way. But for now, as I understand it, Ubuntu is way, way, way the leader, regardless of what DistroWatch says. You know, DistroWatch says what it wants to, or what it does, but it doesn't mean it. Doesn't mean everything. It is a good starting point, a good place to look at. So we got testing week. It's Ubuntu is now on GitHub Lab. Let me minimize this and see where our installer is at. It's disappeared. There we go. It just took itself out of the picture. Wasn't using up extra resources. Well, I still got quite a while. So I'm back in LibreOffice. I wonder if we could look in the menu and see. Maybe this won't change. Under accessories. Some things might change. Like G Parted was here now. It may not be here after the install. And Grandpa Archive Manager, that's an awesome utility to have on board so you don't have to install it. File Manager, this should be Thunar. Looks like Thunar. It is Thunar. I don't know if that's the only one here. Accessories, fonts, the Mate Calendar. Mate Calendar under... In Ubuntu, uh, Ubuntu, huh? Mouse pad, notes, on board. That's that uh, keyboard. Screenshots for taking a picture of your desktop. Terminal emulator. Let's see, do they use the XFC? Probably. Yep. Excellent. All right. Education. LibreOffice, math, and your games. We got some games. Sudoku, mine, and SGT. Puzzles collection. Huh. Take all that away and put it in there. Solitaire, I'd be happy. Under graphics, we got GIMP, the GNU Image Manipulation Program, Libre Office Draw, and Rosetto Image View. A document scanner, so scanner is installed by default. Or scanner and printer support, probably. Firefox, Pigeon Internet Messenger, Thunderbird Mail, and Transmission for your torrent link handles. Handler. A handler, <laughs> Pro Media Player that comes in by default. Pulse Audio Volume Control XF Burn. That was one thing I noticed with Linux Mint XFCE version. It did not come with XF Burn, and I'm, I, I, didn't, I hadn't had the chance to figure out why yet. That's on a back burner. All right, we got the full suite of LibreOffice. It looks like, and here we got our settings which will be the same thing as what's in this settings panel right here. We'll open that up in a second. Under system. Connect to remote file system. Gigalo. What version is this? 051. Huh. That's fun to say. It always reminds me of the movie. An American Gigolo. Let's open up the settings panel. I'm not sure if you can hear it or not, but it's pouring down rain. <laughs> I've only got two leaks. Oh, about me. So it means it comes with either mugshot, yep, and XFCE. Uh, this is a live session, so there's no need changing any of that. That's pretty cool. I always like to see that come in, where I don't have to use Yay to install it. 
uh, appearance that could change our icons and the way we look here. There's your dart. Like the gray bird, where it was at. They're using elementary, elementary XFCE darker for their icon set. Uh, it does not come with papyrus. You can just have to download and install that, I'm sure. Alright. Enable system events. They won't matter. They'll turn off when it reboots. We're just looking at it here. Settings. Back to all settings. Desktop. Here's our wallpaper choices. Huh. That's pretty nice. That's real nice. I wonder if that's in uh, the Isle of Man. Don't have a logo or anything on it identifying it as such. Be real nice to know that, though. This one could be. I'm just like water. Anything with water in it, I'm a sucker for. So that's our desktop backgrounds or wallpapers, as they say here. You can change your right-click menu, add and subtract from it. Okay, under icons. It's got all this stuff on the desktop. We don't really need any of that. I like to set mine up this way so that when I stick a USB or another external hard drive in, it'll show up on my desktop. And I don't really like no, no icons except for my trash. Yeah, let's make it a little smaller for now. Like I said, it's all going to change. Uh, language support. Oh, that's pretty nice. Look at that. Checking available language support. wonder if escape. Yeah. Remind me later. Let's close that out. So you can get language, built-in language support. Nice. I'm not sure why you would need that unless maybe you bought the computer and it was already installed and you wanted to change the language. Maybe. Menu editor, that's probably Libre. Menu Libre, yeah. There it is. That's a pretty nice program. You do a lot of stuff with it. It's Again, it's complicated. It can be complicated. So if you do use this, maybe you do a little Google search on it and try to familiarize with it. Familiar, familiarize yourself with it. Do it in a virtual box. <laughs> Back up your start menu first. Notifications, we can turn those on and off here. That's pretty nice too. I don't think I've ever seen it laid out quite like this. That's real nice. I like that a lot. I'm going to find out what that is. I might carry that into my arch if I can figure it out. All right. Probably can't. <laughs> panel, there's our panel settings. Make it bigger, smaller. Add items to it. Change the appearance. Go back to all settings. XFCE terminal. I just turned that on. Screen saver. Might as well just leave it at default for this second. Let's see something. Where's the preview button? Huh. Usually there's a button where you can preview it. I think. Huh. Oh well. Maybe that'll change once it actually gets installed. Bluetooth is installed by default. Network configuration. Additional drivers. Now that's also real nice. Especially for the guys that's got NVIDIA. Any kind of those the NVIDIA cars in particular. ATI, I'm not sure about, but the most I've heard about is most of the time when I hear about a video problem, NVIDIA, a video driver problem, it has to do with NVIDIA drivers. <laughs> so that's a big help. Keyboard, you change the keyboard, mouse and touchpad. Let's see what kind of theming we got. Oh, nice. Put that on white. Make it bigger. That ain't going to. Just going to keep that circle. <laughs> Not really doing anything at this point. Session and startup, mime type editor, like DM. That's for your greeter. Install, we just did. That'll disappear. Time and date, onboard settings, and settings editor. Pretty nice. So far, I like it.
Now, I really wish I was standing somewhere around there throwing a hook in that water right now with a big old mullet on it about 18 inches long and, I don't know, 80-pound test line, good fluorocarbon leader, big circle hook, and a bait casting reel, big one, about a 9 or 11 hot. Okay, so this is going to force me to pause up. We've talked about Zubuntu or Shibuntu. It's still not even halfway through yet. So I'm going to pause the video, and I'll be back when it gets closer. Okay, so it's removing some stuff uh, that you typically see toward the end of a, a install. It's removing any temporary files or what have you. We should be getting pretty close to finish here. Let me get back in full screen. Hey, what about passing on your installation media to a friend? A half. <laughs> on more than one occasion. My next video is going to be... Me, I gave, I built a, if you follow my channel, YouTube channel, you know that I built uh, several USBs with, I think I installed Arch Linux on them, on my videos, but anyway, I made, a, I made one in particular, a Linux Mint USB bootable, and I showed the guy how to uh, boot into it to use it. And instead of Windows, and he liked it so much, and because of the circumstances with his computer, he asked me to install Linux on it, <laughs> which I gladly did. Uh, Linux Mint XFCE version. I had fully intended uh, installing Linux Mint Cinnamon on it, but I happened to have that on my USB stick, and I didn't catch it until the installation was finished. And that's an OEM install, by the way, where when he signed, when he turned it on, it was just like a computer you'd went to the store and bought. And when you bring it home, you turn it on, you have to enter your location and your name and a few simple things. It sure is taking this quite a while to install. I didn't check the time, but it seems like it's been at least 20 minutes. Well, I'm five months without a cigarette. 21st of this month. 21st of September. Five months. Oh, Bass Top. Nice. Bass Top is in the Ubuntu repositories. It's not in Linux Mint's repository. Or it wasn't in their standard repository. I'm not saying you couldn't get it. I didn't try it to go beyond that. I just know that it was not in their normal repositories. It wasn't in the Discover Store. It was not in when you do it. It wasn't in the App Install or App Find. Synaptic Package Manager didn't have it either. But that's pretty cool. Ubuntu does. I just, I like the XFCE. If you hadn't noticed the last so many videos have not been Arch, but they've been XFCE. So I've been exploring how other people arrange XFCE desktop, what their interpretation of XFCE should do and what it shouldn't do, which is pretty neat. I really kind of wish I'd have done this before I started my Arch journey. Just to see all the different. Of course, I wouldn't. wouldn't have, I wouldn't have had a clue what most of them were at the time. Maybe things happened the way it was supposed to happen. Yeah, I can see myself out there in a kayak and a rod and reel. You'd be in pretty good shape if you lived there and you traversed these mountains all the time. <laughs> I wish there was a, some sort of indicator on there where this was from, if this is the Isle of Man or somewhere around there. I well, it still hadn't got past that. Stamp D succeeded thing.
Okay, so we got finished, and my options are to continue testing, restart now. I'm going to continue the test, but I'm not really. All right, so I'm going to just say shut down, and I should get, yeah, well, please remove installation, then I'm going to medium and hit enter, and I did, which removed it from here. No longer there. Let's restart. I'm going to restart in full screen. EFI Ubuntu. See if it keeps our display settings. Be honest, I doubt it. Shabuntu. Press Ctrl C to cancel all five system checks in progress. Well, let's let it check all the file systems. All right, it must be clean. Okay. Give it my long, trusted, complicated password. And as you can see, it did not keep the resolution quick fix, so... Settings, display, select the one that works for you. For me, it's 1680 by 1050. Keep this app configuration, say OK. And there we go, we got our beautiful desktop. Let's just see, software updater is in the taskbar. What's for? Update, the updated software has been issued since Ubuntu 2 release. Do you want to install it now? Uh, 128 megs, that ain't much. Software updates, about to the store. Ooh. I'm going to wait on that. Remind me later. Thank you. Let's see, did it keep G party? So it didn't keep G party. Not all of the stuff that was in here will probably be in here. Uh, under accessories, I can see there's less stuff. You won't see exactly. Catfish was there. Archive. Not sure. Let's see games. Yeah, for the most part, it's there with the exception of the G party. And so now it's just a matter of time of making it look like your own. Let's see something here. Panel preferences. Let's unlock it. Grab that little bar right there. Slide it right on down to here. I'm going to make it a little bigger. I didn't tell it to do that automatically. It did. I'm going to relock it. And press those for on the bottom. I'm assuming that all the XFCE uh, options will be the same or close. Yeah. Okay. Let's close out of that. So I think that ought to conclude this video. That pretty much covers it all. We went through the start menu. We went through their web page. Uh, talked a little bit about Zubuntu. I thank you very much for watching. I think I'm going to close this one out. Y'all have a good day. Peace.